day 196 of the Ukrainian war map, also known as Russia's devastating invasion of Ukraine. Chelsea here, and today is another quick update as I take a bit of a simplified and down-to-earth approach to the happenings on the ground in Ukraine. And as always, I like to start off with the military losses here. Now, normally I would say here that the killed or the Russian personnel, military personnel lost in action, this 50,000 or so figure is just an estimate, but we have some really, really breaking news legitimizing these figures. Now, take a look at this memo from the Russian Federation Ministry of Defense. Uh, from a, a guy by the name of uh, D. Grigorenko. So that's like the uh, the deputy chairman for all of this here. Now he's actually uh, sent it to someone called Dmitry Yurovich. I'm not sure who that is. I'll try to condense this down for you guys. Uh, it is Russian, so my Russian is quite very rusty. But uh, I'll read the middle portion. Uh, I think it's uh, it might sound a bit boring, but it's super important. So in the middle there, it goes on to say, uh, according to the information provided by the Ministry of Defense, as of the 24th of August 2022, during the special military operation in Ukraine, died 48,759 servicemen of the armed forces of Russia. In accordance with decree of the government of Russian Federation, number this, this, and that, uh, this, this, and that, there, lump sum payments totaling four. Uh, sorry, 7.4 million rubles are uh, made to the families of the victims. Full stop, every family, full stop. So they really mean that there. Thus, as of the indicated date, uh, about 360 billion rubles have been paid or are to be paid in the near future, which is 98% of the amount of funding provided by the federal budget for 2022. And then it goes on to say, uh, given that uh, we're losing... 50,000 in six months. Uh, we're dividing that per, on a per month basis down the bottom. It says there is probably going to be 8,000 a month uh, killed into the 2023 budget. So they're actually budgeting for 2023, saying an additional uh, 8,000 per month Russian soldiers will uh, be eliminated from the Ukrainian army effectively. This is huge. This is massive. This is, I haven't seen anything like this before. What I do see every day is trolls in the comments saying that this is not a legitimate figure. There's many, many reasons why I went into many different reasons on different days as to why this is quite a legitimate figure. And, um, and then we've got the wounded. So this figure means this killed figure is really close to reality at, uh, at uh, the, yeah, the 24th of August. So I probably won't harp on too much about uh, these figures anymore today. Don't want to take up too much time in the video. But uh, this 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 stuff is legit. Wow, this is this is incredible. I'm looking forward to seeing updates here over the, the next coming days about this. Uh, then we'll just take a little quick look at uh, <laughs> these things, which are generally definitely known to be quite legitimate. It's hard to hide these things, but 36 armored combat vehicles, losses on the Russian side, uh, additional 20 tanks and additional 15 artillery, an aircraft and a, and a chopper too, which I'll show you soon. But uh, yeah, a little bit uh, excited about this, not in the way of loss of life, that's all horrible, you know, losses on both sides, but uh, in particular, uh, the, the, the legitimization or legitimacy of everything that we're seeing and we thought was true anyway. Okay, now let's move across to the, uh, the map as we always do and see what's happening there today. Quite a lot happening today, in fact where Russia is having to deal with multiple counter-offensive pushes from the Ukrainian side. We're talking Kherson, the Donbass, and particularly Kharkiv at the moment too. This is actually quite breaking news as of recording, uh, recording it. So uh, I'll start off with just some footage and we'll take it from there because there's a lot to go through. I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible. So this first footage, uh, which shows some footage of the... Uh, we've got an, an attack helicopter involved in the offensive. So this is a Ukrainian attack helicopter doing its thing and this is all in Kharkiv again so uh, in follow-up to that further in Kharkiv is we've got uh, an additional footage of uh, ground uh, Ukrainian infantry troops as well not doing much sort of scouting out the area but uh, yeah the footage just keeps coming through this morning or this evening now also in Kharkiv a Russian Su-25 air support jet was shot down by the Ukrainian army using man pads over Volokivya. 
gain in the in the uh, Kharkiv Oblast. Now, uh, according to the Russian side, the jet crashed, but the the pilot evacuated. I'm sure we'll see some wreckage footage of this one sooner or later. And in the same location where that jet crashed, uh, we've got uh, just a photo of the Ukrainian military there as well. And even further in the Kharkiv region, we've got a, a Russian army colonel was captured by the Ukrainian military. Uh, now, he doesn't look in amazing shape. Uh, he's the older guy here, but um, genuinely don't worry about this guy. He'll probably get fed housed and treated better as a prisoner of war in Ukraine in Ukraine as opposed to being treated like many soldiers are um, just how Russia treats their own soldiers not even joking also we've got a just a photo of a, a Russian T-72 B-3 tank so they're actually an older tank but sort of uh, updated a bit uh, was captured by the Ukrainian army in the vicinity of Balaklia, right there. And they captured a, a, a working Ural cargo truck, truck of the, of the Russians as well. Now we go on the map a little bit further down and in the Izium direction, two Russian T-72 tanks, again, really, were, were captured in, you know, around there. And if we just have a look at the, the date map, as I like to call it, we'll just go backwards and forwards and we can see there's quite a push uh, into sort of encapsulating Izium. Now we go backwards a couple of days and you can see there's a push. Uh, on different maps, it actually shows there's more ground taken around here as well. So this map isn't uh, the latest and greatest, but um, you know it is what we have to work with at the moment. Just generally speaking, uh, Ukraine would love to take Izium because uh, it's, it's quite an important intersecting location. So you've got a lot of infrastructure in terms of the main arterial highways and the train routes, things of that nature. Then we move across down to the Donbass region where there was a really big push here yesterday on the Ukrainian side, which I mentioned in yesterday's video too. But basically this, uh, this gap in the front line for the Russian front line there, offensive. Now, uh, starting off, uh, can't really see it here on the map. I mean, you can see the location, Starry Caravan. Now, this uh, we've got actually a bit of a video footage of um, the Ukrainian military here. So they really seem to be pushing beyond the nat natural obstacles here. Uh, something Russia, as you can see from this map, has had a hard time doing. In fact, just yesterday, uh, Ukraine started to jump over uh, this river here, the Severodonetsk uh, River, effectively, is what I would call the name of it. So uh, yeah, that's that's really interesting to see, all of that there. Although just below it, uh, we have in Kramatorsk, uh, Russian shelling destroyed um, part of a hospital in Kramatorsk. I've got worse photos than this to show you. I honestly don't uh, want to. These are just really dick moves when they do things like this. I'm just not a fan. Then we move across to the Dnipro Petrovsk Oblast here. So I'll zoom out to give you guys a bit of context there. And here we go. So uh, Ukrainian air uh, defense uh, defense has really shot down a, a Russian drone uh, right here, just outside the Dnipro city. Really, not too exciting this one, but uh, just a little bit of a photo there. Then we move across to the well-known counter-offensive in the uh, the Kherson Oblast and the Kherson front line there. Now, uh, let's see. So Ukraine's Southern Operational Command reported really recently that several settlement, settlements in Kherson, uh, the Oblast, were liberated by the armed forces. So we're talking really on the north bank of the Dnipro River here, uh, northwest bank now. Like I say, we don't see a lot of differences on the map here. We'll go backwards and forwards. Not really much to speak of. However, uh, here's a map from a, another location. If you can see this one on the screen now. So uh, you can see that there's certainly a, a bigger push in the sort of the the, the north east section for sure. And uh, sort of in the midrift section as well. So it appears, getting away from that, that... Uh, the Ukrainian forces with their offensive, I've said this a couple of times now, they're sort of split in the north bank where it's 
assumed to have about 20,000 Russian soldiers, maybe up to at the moment, uh, splitting them into three sections. So one on the, uh, let's call it the south section, one in the middle uh, across past the Inulets River, and then up to the, uh, the this highway here, it's the, the T2207, and then the, the north section here as well. And from that last picture I showed you, they really look to be cornering off uh, giving them no access to, to access at least even a walk-in bridge of sorts down here near the dam. So that's this that's this is a pretty big deal. Uh, just the the push that the Ukrainian military are doing at the moment here. And uh, it, it obviously must be said that um, the Ukrainian forces are are pushing in so many on so many axes as they call it. There's so many theaters of war at the moment. There's about 500 kilometers or 300 miles. Of defending uh, territory, you could say that, that Russia is looking to defend. They can't uh, seem to go on the offensive at the moment. They are really struggling to uh, use their, utilize their resources and their logistics to put uh, the soldiers in the right spot, put the ta their own tanks in the right spot, to put their artillery and ordnance in the right spot. So, uh, if I was to zoom out, uh, Russia just doesn't seem to know where to put its people right now, and it is getting hurt, particularly in the south and the north. We are talking Kharkiv, we are talking uh, the Kherson Oblast, and not the least of which is the Donbass region there as well. So, there's really big things happening at the moment. I can't, uh, I can't stress that enough. Now we've got another video here of the uh, Ukrainian military in full control of the Novovozensk uh, area in in the Kherson region up the north here, right there. So uh, there we go, a little bit of a video. Now it is true to say that uh, Russia is doing everything it can to stop this current counteroffensive by the Ukrainians, like everything it can. It would anyway, let's pull up the fire map. I don't know if it's gonna show it here so much, but they are firing onto the front line in a big way, bigger than this uh, this quote unquote satellite firms or fire map or fire dots would show. They are just doing whatever they can to hammer the Ukrainians. Problem is a bunch of their radars were taken out. They are flying blind. I mean, they throughout the last six months, they've been throwing shells everywhere in Ukraine without really getting any military targets. So they are just hoping for the best, trying to scare off the Ukrainians on their counteroffensive. And I don't think it's working at all. Speaking of the segmentation here, or the, the separation of the three uh, areas in the northern bank, we have the Inulets River here where, oh, here we go. The fire map is still out. I wasn't expecting this, but I knew it was, was happening. So uh, this bridge is no good. It's not working. Ukrainians took it out, high Mars, whatever the case may be. Now, Russians kept building or attempting to build pontoon floaties here so they could get over it. Um, and the Ukrainians just keep shelling the hell out of it. And they, it's just not functional. Uh, Russians would love this, that way they could get across. I don't know how long this is actually, I've never thought to look. So let's see. Oh, I thought that was kilometers, okay, there we go. So 100 meters, okay. So enough to swim, for a Russian to swim across, or run away, but, uh, you know, not enough for, well, you couldn't obviously put a um, anything but a boat over it. Uh, uh, APCs or tanks, nothing's getting over there except for uh, it's a decent swim, 100 meters. So they're not going to do it. They really want to put their pontoon bridge there, and they're just not getting that option to do to, uh, so. So the Russians, I'm speaking of, they are really getting let down by Ukrainian fire. Good for them. Now, Ukraine's Operational Command South reported uh, in the last 24 hour reporting period that the situation in southern Ukraine uh, remains tense and dynamic. However, Ukraine's military destroyed five tanks, uh, 12 Mr. B and Mr. S howitzers. They also destroyed three giant sent B towed guns, uh, three units of armored vehicles, and reportedly uh, eliminated 83 Russian troops. So this isn't as big as the figures, obviously, over here. All of these figures here for the military hardware losses includes the entirety of Ukraine, but uh, just talking about the, the the south unit here. And we'll quickly switch out to some news where the new UK PM Liz Truss uh, was uh, 
in discussions today with, with Biden, US President Biden, and they both continued to show their solidarity and support for uh, Ukrainian people. In some further news, the European Commission president is looking to, uh, along with the G7 nations, which includes you know, the US, Canada, Italy, Germany, and the, and the rest of Europe, uh, looking to set a price cap for gas from Russia to cut its profits uh, that they use for the, the Ukraine war. So for instance, uh, Russian oil would be purchased at a discount uh, from the prevailing regular market prices to limit, to limit Moscow's or Russia's profits as it prosecutes its war against Ukraine. Although I do think this uh, political manoeuvring and sanction, sanctioning of sorts uh, won't be the easiest. Um, it's going to need pretty much most, if not all, countries on board to, to make it work. But uh, yeah, that does include India and China. So we'll see how that one plays out soon. And just as always, I say a funny to round off the day with, but uh, the video, <laughs> but uh, this is actually not necessarily funny, although I guess I find it funny enough, and not necessarily bizarre or conspiratorial, but rather just some footage of uh, Ukrainian soldiers very happy to be advancing against the Russians in the Kherson Oblast region there. So it looks like morale is high, and after a day like today, I, I can't imagine that uh, yeah, it really could not be high. Um, so that's about it for today, guys. Uh, I've uh, thanks yeah for watching once again. Um, yeah, take it easy. I'll try to take it easy too, doing these videos. Uh, I, I did actually switch up the format and take out a lot of stuff I wanted to put in at the last moment. I came across that breaking news of sorts from the finance minister regarding uh, them effectively confirming that uh, there's about nearly 50,000 uh, Russian soldier losses. I mean, Russia can hide it mostly from a political standpoint, but when it comes to the numbers, when it comes to the finance figures, this is difficult to hide. Add to that the fact that uh, countries have to budget for things, um, you know, past, present, and future, really. So using previous results to dictate future budgeting requirements, and that's exactly what that document was about. So I kind of got a little bit excited in this uh, video. We'll see what happens. I did change the format, uh, probably back to the good old more in-depth looking things uh, of a video shortly. But no, I really appreciate all your time again, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Please leave a comment, subscribe, show all those trolls in, in the comment section your prevailing sentiment and uh, support for the Ukrainian people. And I do hope to see all of you guys there in the next one. Cheers.